Ah, sorry, I totally missed the cue there. Hello, everybody, and, and <laughs> welcome to the show. I was too busy being mad at Ian. Um, hi, local chat episode. Sorry, writer strike this week. It's hard to hit our marks. Um, man, just workshop that joke. Um, local chat episode 120. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Camera's over here today. I'm losing it. I'm, I'm sober, and it's just not a good way to live your life folks uh joining me this week is the one and only ian gibson <laughs> well, i thought i was gonna phone it in this episode but somebody already took that bullet for me uh hello hello oh, oh. oh uh, you called also me. joining hello. us back from uh his trip to the himalayas it's david from save data yeah i met my uh great uncle the the yeti you know about similar <laughs> amounts of hair. That's pretty good. That's I was trying to think of like where you would go to have grown a lot of hair, and I was gonna do a Castaway joke, but I forgot the name of the movie. Um, Cast it's away. Castaway, by the way. It's, castaway. It's, castaway. <laughs> it's not. Oh, FedEx that's volleyball. that has my other cousin Wilson in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> folks, this is local chat. Uh, this is the show where we talk about video games and uh, often not video games. Uh, and this week, we're going to talk about video games and probably, dare I say, we're going to dip into some of the not video games a little bit. Mm. Um, gentlemen, this yeah. week I set out to do an amazing thing. <clears throat> I bought a new SD card for my Steam Deck. Nice. Um, I needed more room than 256. I bought the Evo Samsung 512. Same one Ian bought, the same one, but it was ever, the, same one the guide recommends, and I looked up the guide. Apple. It's 35. You got it for 35, right? Which is the lowest it's ever been. No, I think I got it for 44, and the next day it was 35. Oh, okay. So, it's still oh, solid. Price, still, though. It's still, good, it's still way cheaper than the, sand, uh, than the SanDisk, which I usually buy SanDisk just out of habit because it's all I own. Um, so I, uh, I cloned that sucker thanks to Linux cloning console command. Uh, it cloned it oh. over so I didn't have to like redo everything. It just cloned the drive over. The only hiccup though is the hard drive was stuck at 238 and it couldn't get, you're like, oh, you gotta go resize it, the partitions, but the mm -hmm. Steam Deck wasn't recognizing any of the partitions and the guide wasn't saying anything about it. So finally, I found a wonderful Reddit post that's like, hey, I downloaded this Windows partition program plugged in my SD card, read it with the program, and then just put it back in the Steam Deck, and it lets you resize it in the Steam Deck. So I did exactly oh. that. Worked perfectly. So I left a comment saying it worked for me as well, and, like, upvoted it just so people know it works. So now I've got 512 beautiful gigabytes on that MU Deck uh, side of my Steam Deck, and I have crammed it full of delicious video games. I threw all the Dreamcast stuff on there, uh, most the PSP stuff, um, and then th that just leaves me room for like modern stuff, like Wii U games. When I rip them, they're like 38 gigs, which is like Oof. wild. Uh, and then, um, yeah, just like PS2, and I think PS2. You might have to look this up, whoever's listening to this. But it's isn't it like 17 terabytes? Is like the it's full a, oh the full PS2 library, it's library. Big, yeah. It's, it's big. Um, it's yeah. something like that, uh, which is wild. Like, it's like I, over a thousand games, I believe. Yeah, yeah I think it's over two thousand games. So I remember. Actually, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the, mini game game show. Yeah. Yeah, because the um, years ago when Reddit was a little bit smaller, um, I used to go on the retro gaming forums, and the guy would update his PS2 physical collection, like the white European labels. He would update it yeah. like every month or so. And be like, this is what I've acquired out of 2000. It was like 2700 or something. So anyways, I've got that all together. It's very exciting. Um, but what I want to know more about, speaking of retro SD cards, Ian Gibson, you have received your Retroid Flip. Retroid Pocket Flip. Pocket Flip. Pocket Flip. Pocket Flip. Pocket Flip. Um, I, I, can, I can fault you a little bit for that because Retroid a company that makes gaming handhelds, they are pretty much the only one on the market that uses common fucking naming conventions because they're like, it's the Retroid Pocket 2, the 2+, the 3, the 3+, and everything else is like 
this is the Mimo MH256, and now it's time for the Mimo <laughs> MH356. Yeah. And it's like, what the yeah. fuck is wrong with you people? But anyways, um, I have it, folks. I pre-ordered it a month ago. It released a week later, and then it was like another two weeks before it shipped, and then it was probably 10 days before it got here. Because um, I normally don't have problems with things shipping from China. It's either it's like two categories, right? It's like AliExpress shit that is like you order and you if you don't receive it in six months, then there's a problem, you know, <laughs> and then there's like my mechanical. And then like you, if you order stuff from a more reputable company, like my keyboard, I ordered from Keychron and I didn't realize this. It shipped from China, got here in five days to Florida. Uh, and I was like, awesome. Cool. That's that's pretty fast. Uh, the Retroid, um, it probably took 10, 12 days to get here from when it was shipped. And the last five days it was in Florida, <laughs> like it like it got here to like Georgia, Orlando, and then it just stopped updating tracking for like literally five days. And I was like, wow. I got to write this fucking thing off. And then it finally showed up. But anyways, this is it. Uh, our listeners of the podcast. Oh. Here it is. I'm not going to describe <laughs> it. <laughs> Suck it. I mean, <laughs> if, if you want a description, it looks like the Nintendo 2DS XL. Yeah, Their new so, Nintendo so 2DS. Sorry, it's 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 a little fatter and chunkier than that. It's I, I think it's actually closest to like the DS Lite. I would say uh, okay. uh, it's about the size of a small uh, like a small smartphone, so like a Pixel probably, but not like a Pixel XL. Um, it's pretty chunky. It's all plastic. It feels sturdier than a fucking DS or 3DS. Like you know, how the 3DS would get a little creaky sometimes. There's no fucking creaks in this thing, and the hinge feels great. And that was one of the things I was worried about was all plastic from, yeah. uh, uh, you know, not a main party company. I was worried about that, but it's great. The screen looks fantastic. Fuck. Um, <laughs> there's the screen. It's, it's hard to show shit. I guess that kind of shows something. Eh, not Damn. really. But anyways, um, it has all the buttons feel great. The triggers, the R2, L2 are analog. So I actually played a little bit of a racing game and I was I was like actually feathering the throttle and the brakes and it has Hall effect sliders. So they're kind of PSP 3DS style sliders, but they feel actually very good. Hall <laughs> effect <laughs> sliders. I didn't even know they made yeah. Hall effect sliders. Okay. Yeah. Um, the only problem is, is the way that it's positioned. It's almost like a 3DS, but it, where the bottom screen would be, they've brought the, the analogs in to the bottom mm. half of the screen. And it's going to take me a little bit to get used to that because you're basically putting your thumb at it like a solid 45 degree angle or maybe even more extreme angle to get to them. Um, but I'm enjoying it so far. Um, hardware looks fantastic. I do have some problems with it, though, which I don't think is necessarily a problem with this. I think it's a problem with all of these fucking devices. And I was hoping that it was not going to be an issue, which is that. This is an Android device. I love Android. Android's great. It's a great ecosystem. It's compatible with a shitload of hardware and software. It's easy to set up, customize, etc. The number one problem I have with Android, though, are custom solutions for Android. I don't know why. I'm assuming there's software limitations. They just don't do a good job of locking down Android and being like, there's no veil. There's no veil being like, this is not Android. It's something custom. You can immediately tell it's Android and you can very easily get into the Android back end. Um, it's the same problem I have with my my Fire tablet, my like cheapo Amazon Fire tablet. It's an Android tablet, but they ship it as a Fire tablet, has Fire OS on it, has a lot of Amazon branding. Within like five fucking seconds, I was in the like I was accidentally into the Android back end and I was like, fuck, I don't want to be back here. Get me back to the simplistic Android. <laughs> the Amazon thing. Um, and so that's here. kind of the problem I have with this is that they have a partial setup. But you're pretty quickly just looking at a fucking Android home screen. And then so you're kind of doing a combination of controls in Android outside of emulators don't work that well. It's confusing. The UI is not made for control. So you're kind of just pushing buttons and trying to figure out what they do or touching the top screen. At least the top screen is a touch screen. But then you're kind of doing a hybrid. And the setup, the setup process was not good because the setup, they started out being like, hey, connect to your Internet which emulators you want to install. And I was like these and it's like, great. That's it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and so I had to like look up guides and they're like, put your SD card in, go to this setting and they'll dump like the ROM folders and then you can transfer ROMs to it and all that shit. Um, and so I did that and um, 
And then I just started trying using some of the emulators and each of the emulators was popping slightly different control settings. So then I had to go into some of the emulators and set up custom controls yeah. and, and like I would launch a game. And even when I got into the game, it was like, oh, shit, which emulator is this using it? Like, what's the key? What's the hot key for this emulator to get me back to the main menu? And I ended up just having a lot of times to just swipe into the Android interface and like killing is, the is app. Is it just running RetroArch, basically? It 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 is it was not from the start. That's what I'm trying yeah. to get set up and running. It has like a custom interface launcher that it's that's an option for you to get into, which seems pretty clean. And I want to use that, but it's not working well. <laughs> so I think I'm <laughs> going to end up transitioning everything over to RetroArch and just boot into Android, hit the RetroArch yeah. and do that. Yeah. Um, it's frustrating. I, I don't know if you guys have. What's it like on the Steam Deck? For emulators and stuff, download emu deck yeah profit emu deck is, <laughs> emu deck's great because it puts everything into steam and and i don't mean that it puts everything you want into steam so you select yeah, what so game single interface yeah, yeah so uh you can you don't have to have any of the emulate raw emulators in steam uh you can just have games you choose yep. what games from each emulator you want to be shown there if stuff's not there you just go into retro or emulation station and all your games are there. So like I keep all the yeah, SNES and NES games in there because there's way too many of them to have on my, on my uh, steam deck, yeah. steam homepage. And then the other nice thing is all of the control stuff is through steam. So if your controls are wrong, yeah. you just go over to the community layouts, you switch it to whichever one you want. You're in the steam interface for changing That's controls nice. and everything. So like um, one of the games I'm going to talk about, it was set to the D-pad as the joystick for N64, and so I just mm. reset it to the thumbstick, and now I have... I think on the original game, it was on the D-pad, and now I have 360 for this multi-shooter game. So that's the nice. best part of it, is it does that. And then, um, like I was mentioning last week, putting the ROMs on it is super easy. You, you, you plug a... They added this now. It didn't used to be this way. You plug in a USB device. It puts all the folders on there. You take that out, put it in your computer, put the things in the right folders, put it back yeah. into the. So, and then so, it, so oh, that's, that's, that's the same. That's nice. Yeah, so that's the same for RetroArch. You can you can do that. It just didn't give you instructions on how to insert the SD card, tell it to create the folders. Um, and, and like so I, I, I don't want the whole collections because I hate having yeah. all the clutter. So like, I just go to the browser and get the the things I want on the Steam Deck. Like I don't even use a yeah. computer for it. Yeah. And I could totally do that on this. I, I think what, what I just really wanted, I kind of knew that this was not going to be there, but I was hoping there was, which is I want this to be a fucking pick up and play device. I want it to treat me like an idiot. I want to just boot it up and oh, it no. forces me into a generic menu. And the menu's like, show me your fucking ROMs directory. And I hit it, hit that. And it goes great. And I know I can get there eventually, but I'm going to have to fiddle with it a lot. And that's that's the frustrating yeah. part understandable they're a smaller company they're making a niche device but it's still frustrating that the market's like that yeah you know, i gotta ask how much was that it's 150 it's okay. and uh okay. it plays i've been i i i haven't tested it myself but looking at charts basically up through ps1 psp it plays pretty much everything and then ps2 gamecube etc it seems to be like 30 to 50 percent of games will run fine on it um the other That's crazy surprisingly good thing, yeah it's pretty good yeah the other crazy thing is, and uh, I'm gonna, I, I don't believe you have this on the Steam Deck yet. It's an Android device. So just for shits and giggles, I booted up fucking Game Pass and I played some Atomic Heart on it, <laughs> and it was fucking working. Oh, you can you can get Game Pass running on there. Uh, on there, not, yeah, yeah. The, not, the, the it's not cloud, not as right? not as easily. Yeah, the, um, you can oh, do okay, cloud gotcha, Game gotcha. Pass pretty easy. Uh, so you so can also nice do things. because it's like Linux. You can basically yeah. run like linux versions of playstation remote play i think they have one for xbox remote play too yeah um so those are not difficult to set up i've played around a little bit with them um so so that's nice. that's that's one of the benefits of this is that yeah. it's an android device so i just went to the play store and i said give me the playstation remote app give me the xbox app and i signed in and i was ready to go and it works pretty well the screen is like i think the screen is like basically like 768p or slightly less but because it's small enough like I played a minute of Atomic Heart and I was like, this is actually fucking playable. I mean, I'm on my home network and everything, yeah. but played through xCloud. And then it has the Steam link as well. So I played a little bit of um, F1 2020 just because I had it installed on my PC. 
and I played that with the analog con- like, triggers and I was like, I, like, if I was really pressed to, I could totally fucking play this shit on here. Um, so it's it's a fully capable device. It's just my only qualm so far is like that out of the box setup should be much easier. They should have just added a, 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 a cleaner step through process because I know it's fully capable of all this stuff. It's just leaving too much on the table. There's not even like a PDF they provide to be like, hey, here's oh, some just, recommendations on how to set this up. <laughs> it's just nothing. Like it's like it's like five steps and then it just dumps you to the Android home screen. You're just like, fuck. So that's that's definitely somewhere that I think the entire uh, retro gaming handled industry could get better. But yeah. I'm excited to play it. It's it's pretty great so far. I'm going to I'm going to dive into it some more for sure. Yeah, I I want one for sure. I want to get one like on sale, I think. Um, either that or the I like I mostly like it because of the clamshell design. The Mew Mini seems pretty cool. The I think that's the one that has garlic OS that's pretty good on it. Did, did you um, see they there is a patent out for from Miu where they are doing a GBA SP style one. So, <gasps> I'll buy that instantly. Uh, is it that small? I I'm I believe so. Oh, a hard pass. I'm not I certain. Didn't, no, I didn't like the game. I know about a ton of people love the SP. That thing ergonomically is an absolute yeah it's, piece of junk. I, love my <laughs> yeah. I won't get it down. I love it though. It's such a perfect <laughs> console. I actually haven't played my pocket in a while, uh, which is okay because that is more for travel. I prefer that. Uh, yeah. Or. Or if I'm playing a Game Boy game, like if I'm going to play a Game Boy or a SNES game, I'll probably play on the pocket because I can also dock it, which is nice. Pocket and dock it. And I can do that with the oh, Steam, Steam Deck. As you well. meant the analog pocket. Yeah. Yeah. Not I thought you the, meant the Game Boy pocket. Not the Game Boy pocket. <laughs> not the Red Rocket in his pocket. Yeah, not yeah. the Red Rocket in my pocket. Um, but I actually, on my desk, I haven't, I haven't cleaned it up. I just have the dock. I've had the Steam Deck dock over there and I just go plug it into oh, my that external nice. monitor that I bought and mm-hmm. and I discovered the my wireless mouse wakes the Steam Deck up from sleep Oof. without pressing the button. You just give it a little shake and it wakes it up like That's a nice. computer. And I'm like, oh, this is I my mean, answer. It's a Linux um, computer, so yeah. <laughs> true. Um I although now thinking about it, I did think it was only doing that in the Linux desktop mode. I don't think I gotta test to that, see if it doesn't. That would make mode, sense. But, that would make sense. Um yeah. But yeah, I have been enjoying that. Uh, moving on here, we've got another thing on the list here. Something uh, wonderful that we're not going to talk about yet. Uh, because I, I've, I've now... My okay. brain's caught up to what we were talking about before the stream started, and we've moved that now. But it wasn't deleted like I asked. So, you know, my, my brain... Oh, my brain just moves forward. Anyway, speaking of I don't know what you're emulation about. on the Steam Deck... Um, Alundra 2 for the PlayStation 1, uh, A New Legend Begins. I forget the, the subtitle every single time. I think it was a marketing thing at the end. No because no one it is remembers not, the subtitle. <laughs> it is not on the main menu of the game. Um, so I think they just threw it in there at the end because it, uh, it, is a, it is a sequel to the first game, but completely different cast of characters. So it's, a, it's a, not a direct sequel, I guess they call this. Yeah. Um, I have been enjoying this game immensely. It is. It, it, I've discovered more and more of its intricacies. There are great dungeons throughout it. I climbed up this giant minotaur Trojan horse and fought a bull inside of it. Um, wow. There. Uh, I did this. Whole, so I met up with the basic. The basic story is this Baron has taken over the kingdom and said, I'm in control now, locked up the king. And then he's looking. He's using the Mephisto who was the w- court wizard to uh, get all these powerful something or other and uh, rule everything. So the princess, uh, who's a warrior, met up with me. I'm Flint. I'm a pirate fighter, uh, pirate hunter or whatever. Uh, we have been traveling together. And then we got s- we actually got separated. They captured her and they threw me off the ship, <laughs> which is just <laughs> wild. Like, I haven't played a story where, like, I'm not important in a while. I'm just, like, a nobody. So they threw me off the ship. I washed ashore. One of the guys I, who's, like, from the town found me. His, his The king's kids are with him. So they take me in their submarine to uh, another place. And it hard cuts 
to the children in prison with me <laughs> just hard cut to it like you've been captured um and then the baron's like and there's another neat thing the baron's like oh you work for me now i'm gonna kill the princess if you don't go find the like sacred pieces for me uh which hmm. i also found kind of interesting um there was this terrifying church of the key so everything in this game is clockwork like uh there's these keys getting put into people's necks uh that turn them into like robot people and then that's how like mephisto does all his powers um that's how most of the bosses have been he he puts a key into it and it turns into like a big scary boss version of it so i've been fighting those this church you walk into you can't do anything there's just <laughs> guys chanting and like bowing down to a giant key in the middle and it's the most terrifying place i've ever been um because they're just all doing that um there's like these little side rooms you can go to uh, or like side areas of the main map where you can throw darts at a board to earn more points to buy things that help you out on your quest. So you can like buy like um, it's essentially like the mini games in Ocarina of Time. So you can like unlock mm -hmm. items that are, are going to help you out. Um, so I spent like you get these bone darts from certain enemies in chess and then you have to time it perfectly. It's like going back and forth. And I finally figured it out as soon as it hits this side. If you click it, it'll be right in the middle. And there is the highest point value is directly in the middle and to the sides, there isn't anything. But as you hit it, it doubles more and more and more. And then you get like these chance times. So I was just like cranking out points. Uh, and I had like 3000 points. And I was like, let me go check out the store. And the like big thing you can buy is like 50,000 points. And I'm like, oh no, this is kind That's of a JRPG, thing, JRPG thing right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh the dungeon design is really neat i talked about that like going up through the minotaur was really cool um i also snuck into the back of this pirate's mansion like through this underground thing and it's almost dark soulsian where once you get up to the top you then unlock the uh the quick entrance yeah. back through um because there's stuff you miss oh. that you don't get the like ring powers until you've unlocked it um there was a guy who farted on me because i threw a bunch of water at him uh, and then he said, why are okay. you being so mean to me? And then turned around and farted on me. Uh, <laughs> I fought a giant shark in an underwater boat today. I had to go find the key to the seagull ruins. Uh, and this giant shark, we like swam back and forth and he had to get the bomb in his mouth and then shoot the bomb. So it blows up. It was really fun. And then uh, in the ladies pirates mansion, she tortured pirates by having two bulls lick their armpits. And there's a picture on my Twitter and it's just a guy like this with bulls on either side. And there's a little like housemaid just yelling at him being like, where is the thing or whatever. And so you see that and the guy's like suffering and whatever. And you're like, that's super weird. I went off and did all the missions and everything came back. And <laughs> there is a line of pirates outside the room and not just like two or three to make the joke. There's about 15 pirates lined up through multiple rooms to the bowl licking room because they all like it now. <laughs> huh. I just pulled up a like picture funny. and that's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. It is such a strange game. Uh, but I'm, I'm absolutely falling in love with it. The story is really neat. It's, it's kind of not what I was expecting. Um, I tend to expect older games to have bad stories because they have quote unquote bad graphics they're comparably old. because yeah. they're old. But I realized a lot of games had to make good stories because their graphics weren't great. And especially in the burgeoning uh, sort of 3D world of the PlayStation 1, you really had to, like, grasp at it. Plus, the first Alundra was a 2D game. Um, so uh, they were moving on to 3 Not a 2D game. A 2D <laughs> game. I know what you're laughing at. Um, <laughs> So the story's really neat because you're, again, you're Flint, you're this pirate hunter, you're not really the important person. You keep making deals with these pirates. One of the guys with this, like, big cigar. Um, actually, the, the Ruby, who's one of the pirate ladies, there's three of them, Ruby, Albert, and Zeppo. Uh, she's voiced by Jennifer Hale. I looked it up today. So I was like, that voice is so familiar. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, Jennifer Hale. I, I need to check how early in, it was 2000. Two, I think this game came out, so I need to check how early in her career that was. But uh, it was funny. Nineteen ninety nine in well, nineteen ninety nine Japan, two thousand in the U.S. Two thousand. Um, 
anyways this is the last week i'll probably talk about it i'm gonna keep playing it i'm gonna try to stream it at some point but it's just so much fun uh, it's, it's it's controls surprisingly well which is crazy for a game from 2000 uh and i'm just having a blast going through it uh it's a so fun like funnily enough that's a game that's been on my list to play and I was very shocked when I heard from you like last week or whatever that you were playing. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, you know what, David, this? I installed this stuff and I said, fuck it. I'm not waiting to play games for things now. I'm just going to play yeah. games. And it was literally the second or third game in my Steam Deck thing. I was like, Alundra 2 oh, said it was a hidden gem a. for the yeah. PS1. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I dove right in. Um, and then another game I've been playing, I'll hit this quick because I haven't gone that far into it, is... I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Bang I. I think it's like Bandai, but with a G, Bang I O. Um, it is a multi-directional, as they say, multi-directional shooter where you use one stick to fly a robot around and use the other stick to shoot a bunch of missiles. And it's all in Japanese. The English translation is on the Dreamcast and doesn't run great on the Steam Deck. So I've been playing the N64 version it is wild fun. You're like missiles are lock on. There's these like weird maps with houses and other enemy robots there. And, and you just oh, yeah. shoot at War everything and, and collect apples and fruit from them. And then at some point you move to the next area and there's a boss. And then the screen comes up and it's all in Japanese and it yells at you a bunch. And then you just play the next mission. Uh, and I played, <laughs> I played like four or five of those before. Wait, so you didn't, you don't fight the boss. No, no, you, you just... fight the boss. You kill oh, the okay, boss. Okay, okay, and, okay. <laughs> but it's always the same guy with like the um with you know in Shenmue, the bro, like the weird long hair guy. Um, like the fawn's yeah. hair. It's always a guy like that who you're fighting. Mm. Um this is the game that I changed the D-pad to the to the left stick for flying oh, around. Yeah, that'd, be, that'd be a lot better, yeah. This game feels so good. It's a 2D. 2d um n64 game which is weird um but you're just like flying around shooting rockets in this mech and it's just like super fun and i'm really enjoying it uh so is it just like so, a shmup it sounds like vampire survivors it's, yeah it's just a shmup it, like you control just the looking missiles. at it, it it looks like contra but you have more control over the missiles and you have more uh -huh. vertical movement yeah so you're you're not you're always flying around the map you like you can land back down but you're always flying like it's not yeah you're not just like walking uh it's it's really fun uh i suggest checking it out if you have an n64 or a possible emulator that you've dumped your rom your 400 dollar uh rom of this is that how much that game costs <laughs> only a thousand were made or something like that oh um, jesus okay or ten thousand uh, they remastered it in, for Europe on the Dreamcast uh, in English. And also and that's the one that didn't run well on the. Yeah, yet. it wasn't running well. I could probably get it working. Um, it's also not as bright, which the website I was looking it up on also points out. It's just like marginally darker than for the original. No game. reason <laughs> for no reason. It's like I thought something was wrong if I hadn't read it. So uh, extremely interesting. Uh, those are the two games I played this week. Not much else uh, to touch on. Ian Gibson. Hi. Let's quickly talk about your creeping you. shadows of doubt you are having. We're going to talk about this game as quick forever. as possible. Just look. Shadows of doubt, folks, continuing to play this game. Um, I know there's bangers probably coming very soon. But as of right now, this is the number one contender for game of the year for 2023 uh quick recap this game is a voxel based first person noir n noir detective noir. simulator <laughs> um the best way to describe it is that it's procedural city procedural cases you can interact with everything uh it's an immersive sim you're a detective you're trying to solve these murders and crimes as they're happening or doing these weird side detective jobs like stealing stuff from people etc um, but honestly, the strongest thing I can say is what I said last week, which is there are so many games that say that shitty, cheesy line of every NPC has a life and they're doing their own thing. And you can be like, yeah, sure. They just fucking sweep for five minutes and then they go stand at the counter for five minutes and then they go back and forth. That's not their life in this game. 
it's real and it's fucking true and it plays hard into the mechanics of the game because you'll be tracking somebody and you're like i don't know where they are and you need to break into their apartment and find their work schedule or their their work schedule and or their work id so you know where they work and then you check the time and you're like oh shit they're at work and then you got to go find their work and that's where they're at you know or or they're just wandering around the city because they're homeless and so you have to go talk to people and be like have you seen this guy and they're like yeah i saw him 30 minutes ago at this intersection and then you go over there and try and find him it's it's <laughs> it's crazy. The game's fantastic. Um, so I've been playing it some more. I do have some shame with this game, though, which is that. This game is not hard. It is realistic. And what I mean by that is that I've always thought I, I feel like everybody's always thought. I could be a good I could be a police detective. That would be fun. I could solve that. I could solve that. Uh, no, you fucking couldn't, because <laughs> <laughs> like the way the the way the crimes and murders happen in this game, like there is evidence there that will tie you to them. Like, I trust the game enough. The game's not that buggy at all. So I trust the game enough when they say there's always evidence, something that will allow you to identify the person with some level of certainty. I am just struggling. So I started a game. I had one murder. I spent tracking down all these leads, doing like fingerprints and stuff and all this stuff got fucking nowhere. And I got really discouraged and like I was taking so long with the first murder investigation that a, that like the police scanner went off and a second murder happened and I was still investigating. And then a third murder happened and I was still investigating and I was just like, I'm fucking dead ending everywhere with this thing. And I'm like, I'm just not a good fucking police detective. Like it got to the point where I was so late in the case that I was like, all right, let me just go back to the crime scene and like reprint everything and do it. And I go back to the crime scene and it's gone. They got rid of the fucking crime scene. <laughs> like it had been multiple <laughs> days and they had cleaned it up. And I was like, fuck. And the craziest thing, the craziest fucking thing was that in the process of this, at some point I was tailing this guy and I wanted to search his apartment. And I go to his apartment. I knock on the door and he opens the door and I'm like, Hey, fuck face. Are you this person? And he's like, yeah, I'm that person. I'm like, cool. And like in my head, I'm going like, I want to search your apartment. I know you're not going to let me in. I don't want to pay you. I don't want to bribe you to do that because it's going to be too much. So <laughs> and I was like, can I sneak in? And then he was in there. And I, eventually I was just like, I know your fucking work schedule. I know you're going to leave in an hour. So I'm just going to sit in the hallway. I'm going to stand in the hallway and literally just <laughs> stake out your fucking door and wait for you to leave. And um, I'll skip ahead a little bit. So eventually he did leave, which was really cool. It was the confirmation of like, no, they actually have a work schedule. He was he was a couple minutes late for work. He's supposed to be at work nine to five and he left at like nine, ten a.m. Oh, um, but but he eventually did leave. Slacker. But but while I'm waiting for him, um, I, I don't think it, I was actually drawing suspicion, but I was role playing a little bit and I was like standing around the corner and like peeking behind, like around the corner and I pulled out a newspaper <laughs> And I was like raising the newspaper when people were walking by and then lowering it because when you raise it, it hides you basically. <laughs> and and then I started reading the newspaper and it said Corpo Killer strikes again, three dead <laughs> in related murders. And I start reading the fucking newspaper article and it's like, oh, that's my first victim. Wait, that's their that's their fucking co-worker. And that's another one of their co-workers that was found dead. And I'm like. This I got a fucking serial killer ripping <laughs> through the work office of my first victim and I don't even realize it. And I'm on the fucking back foot over here and I'm like this fucking game, this fucking game. And I only knew that because I picked up a newspaper and happened to read it. And it's this game's fucking incredible. It's I, I will. I know you've been having a great time with it. Yeah, I, as soon as you told as soon as telling the story, you said there was a second and third murder. I was going to say. Is it? The, it's probably the same person because those can happen. I've read of people yeah. having those happen. Um, that's why I was saying in the one we were streaming, I was wondering if there was going to be another murder. Like, let's go do something else and wait. Um, but yeah, I've I've just been having a blast with it. Um, I've been trying to do like the funny jobs, like the humiliate ones. It's like yeah. throw food in this person's face. Uh, they live in, in this public. building on the fourth floor <laughs> and they're large. Um, and it's yeah. just like, what? I, I had one of the cases, I think I talked about this on the stream, but it was go, this person has stolen a secret document. So go steal it, this envelope from them. And I've had one of those before and it was, it, the one I had was pretty easy. This one says they work in this building. 
they're large and they make fifteen thousand dollars a year or or crone crowns Mm -hmm. and uh, not crones disease uh crows that's what it is and i was like oh my god so eventually i'm at the point and i need to go back in because i learned a lot from you with like the sticky notes and everything and organization i was starting to collect every receptionist at every business in that building because all receptionists make fifteen thousand dollars and i was just charting them out and seeing yeah i had one or two of them were large and i searched their apartments and i couldn't find anything but then some of them were like muscular so i wasn't sure of that like i need to check if those can fluctuate usually, or not i usually they're pretty good about like in their bio it will have this exact okay. word they're not so ambiguous think, about like the specific details because most of the people i would just do the inspect and they were all like smaller so i think i've narrowed it down to one or two people i just need to I need to go back to that first guy's apartment and really search through it to see what's there. Um, mm-hmm. But still, my top interaction was uh, in the save data stream before early access was the, the gay couple arguing across their bed while we were on their computer in their bedroom because they <laughs> were the murderer <laughs> and they just let us in there. And they're just going, I guess you can do that. And he's like, what is your problem? I'm going to bed now. <laughs> And then we just get up and walk out of the room. It's like, what is it's happening? Um, it's great. Um, oh, it's I'll just so say good. one more thing about the game, um, which is that it, you kind of already mentioned it. You know, we we were so excited about this game that we decided to start streaming a case together. And um, you were learning things from me and I was learning things from you, like mechanics that are in the game, things that can happen. And it's just crazy. This is an early access game. I haven't hit that many bugs or issues with it. But I've hit so many systems that are well enough implemented in the game to be interesting and usable, etc. And one of them was I finally earned enough money to buy myself an apartment. And so I get this studio apartment in a basement and I go into it and it's like dark and dingy. I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? And then I see this tooltip and I open up the detective menu and you can purchase and place furniture in your apartment like it has within it a full like i don't want to say a full but like a fully functioning and enough there like decorate your fucking detective's apartment thing going on yeah and i was like that does not need to be in this game but it's in here in a fucking (laughs) early access game and it works well enough and i now want to make more money to buy fancier shit for my crappy apartment game the game's absolutely incredible it's amazing in the middle of the we were streaming, I was reading about it and you, or I was checking their discord. You can apparently make tea and coffee and all sorts of stuff in your apartment. <laughs> like turn the um, burner on, put the kettle on. Yeah. Yeah. So but uh, that apartment stuff like works surprisingly well, too. There was actually a brief moment where you could turn on the edit decor menu in the apartment and then walk outside and do it anywhere. <laughs> and they were oh like, oh, God, God. we got to fix this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the the 90 minute demo by the like my third or fourth run of it i would i would immediately know who the killer is because they kind of project that and i would just turn in the case with them so i would accelerate the story and you get like a basement apartment in that um so i was messing around with that for a bit but it's super fun i was trying to quick find i found a patch notes but i was trying to find they had a um uh sort of road uh road map I'm getting emotional uh, roadmap for the game. And I was trying to see where it was. I'll see if I can find it um, while we're uh, yeah, da- talking about other stuff. Yeah, David, may- maybe you could start talking about some of the games you've been playing, because I, I sure. just been playing Shadows of Doubt. Oh, I mean, I've, I've seen you guys play it on your channel. I've seen we'll play it with Zach on our channel. And it looks cool. Definitely not a David game, but like it looks super cool. So so I'm just curious why why you say that, because there are parts of it that would not make it an Ian game. Like I'm not a super big fan of immersive sim, touch everything, look at everything, but the way it works in this game is great. So I'm, I'm curious to hear why you bounced I'm off it. Maybe I can make neither a, case a fan to... of immersive sim games, nor procedural generation. And like, yeah, redoing the same thing with just the machine changing the parameters. I don't find fun. Uh, yeah. Like that's not something I enjoy. So I would say, the procedural generation in this is is very good, but you very quickly will hit the boundaries of, oh, this is the same proc gen template that I've hit before. Yeah, so I, and I would say maybe in a couple of years, come back to it when that proc gen is even more hidden than it is now. I don't think it'll get there for me, but like 
the, the like using it for like people's schedule and stuff i'm like that's a very good use of it because that's something that would take an eternity to like hand yeah. do for a bunch of characters but like doing that for e- like each case and stuff like that that's not for me yeah yeah uh that's but fair. what i have been playing i'm playing a few games the the one that's been taking up the most of my time lately is i played through all of divinity original sin the first one never mm. first game i've played from larian studios um they're working on Baldur's gate 3 which is coming out later this year so i was i was feeling a D kick and since Baldur's gate 3 isn't like officially out yet i think early access is out with like act one um but it's, it's not the full game or anything so i i was like eh, i have divinity original sin i picked it up on sale forever ago never played it it is marked as good to play on the steam deck so went to town on it absolutely absorbed in that game it is very good but like actual D is really obtuse at times uh <laughs> i i've i've heard that two fixed a lot of the issues and added a lot of like quality of life stuff that one didn't have but man there is so much obtuse crap and tedium in like divinity one like inventory management is not a thing and needed to be <laughs> mm-hmm. uh every key you pick up in the game half of them just have the label of key so you'd never know which is the right one to like <laughs> remove from your inventory so you just keep yes. them all <laughs> but then but like, they are different they're different keys yes Oh. <laughs> this is a legend of zelda where like the keys will work anywhere it's like no this this the key you picked up only goes to this one door this oh, one chest no. and you have it forever and some of them are clearly labeled but like half of them are not um it's so, like don't didn't love that leveling up was really like not clear but like the first level was clear and then after level one like super not clear where you have to use like multiple skill points to level up a thing. Nothing tells you that. <laughs> so I, like I, I got like to level five and I was getting dunked on uh because I wasn't like increasing level. I was just like spreading out my levels of just like, oh, I guess I have yeah. to reach a certain level before I can put a skill point in this thing again. And then at some point I got to like level five or six or something, and I was like, something feels wrong. And I Googled it and they were like, Oh yeah, the game doesn't tell you. You have to save up skill points and like put them into you have to put two of them to upgrade your like class to level two or whatever uh so like a bunch of obtuse system stuff like that that i didn't enjoy but just if you've ever played like neverwinter nights or something or probably dragon age i've never actually played dragon age you need to do that at some point but um man it was it was a really good experience on the steam deck did need to do some googling uh really obtuse systems but like the core game was good combat was great story was like it, good it, it wasn't great but it was it was good it was like an amnesia story which is just like okay please stop we we don't need this anymore uh and it's it's also like meant to be not maybe not meant but designed around being a cooperative D game that you can play uh mm. with like two people because yeah. you get two protagonists from the beginning And you can have two different, like each of you can control one and then each of you gets a companion. Uh, And they do some really cool system stuff. They give you really early on these things called like teleportation pyramids where they give you two. And basically you can teleport between the pyramids regardless of where they are. And they're an item that you can actually like throw in the world. So like you can throw them like into a house's window in some cases, like if it's not covered or with like glass or something like that, you like can't like you don't have the key to get in the door. Like you can throw your pyramid in and then use the other one that you have to teleport inside the house. Uh, And they do some really cool stuff with puzzles like that. There is one like temple where you have to do. uh, There's like a combination that you have to do on either side of the temple. So you have to split your party up. Uh, and like do it and then teleport to the other side and then do the combination on that side and then teleport back uh, and it was just like really cool that stuff was really well done uh, systems were good magic pretty busted in that game uh, <laughs> and like characters were interesting too uh, like I got like a mute 
uh what's the, what's the class scoundrel which is it's a rogue i got a mute rogue who was like super cool and like some you can do can't charm like mass anyone. like like no but like mass effect <laughs> like there's not quite a loyalty quest but like there's a quest line that you can do for your side characters to like fully unlock them and like for the mute guy like spoilers part of your side quest is to get his voice back and <laughs> spoilers so like he doesn't have a voice and if you never do the side quest because it's totally optional, he just never talks. Wow. Like the narrator will read his his lines will come up like in asterisks of like it'll read like, oh, Wolgriff is looking at this thing and nods in this direction or something. And then as soon as you get his voice back, he actually says like lines that are different from the narration, uh, which was a really cool, cool thing to put in there. So I really like that game. I'm looking forward to I'll probably grab Divinity 2 when it goes on sale because I don't want to pay 45 bucks for a game that's been out for forever and goes on sale all the time. 45 bucks. Yeah. I mean it's it's, it's probably worth it. It's like a long game. Like the first I game, am, it was like, um, it was like 60 hours. It was very well worth whatever I paid for it. I, I don't remember this. I have 20 hours in Divinity Original Sin 2. Um I never played one. Um I did really enjoy it. I've always wanted to go back to it, but it I believe two has the more expanded co-op where you can yeah. have like four or five. Yep. Four players. You can do you can do four. And I think there's mods to get it up to six that I saw. Yeah. But yeah. So I've always thought I would wait for someone else to want to play it and then play it with them. So if you ever buy it, let me know, because I will definitely play that with you. I mean, I will um, if if Tears of the Kingdom and then Final Fantasy 16 weren't like imminent. I would have just bought Divinity 2 and probably started playing it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. I'm just putting it in your brain. So when you do buy it, you feel bad for not telling me. So I'm, I'm for I'm I mean, or, my or I'll tell you, you know, or you'll tell me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I remember it being that. super fun you, that the, you mentioning the pyramids brought that back to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I ever realized you could just I just would place them on the ground and be you like, could, oh, I can come can back here. Them. I didn't realize you could throw them. Um, and and I would, I'll also say the narrator in those games is probably my favorite part. Narrator is very um, good because it makes it feel narrator. like D and D, um, yeah. like having a DM there. It's it's having someone read the stuff you're too bored to to or yeah. yeah read to you the stuff you're too bored to read is way better presentation than uh, you just clicking through it like I normally do. And like you could do other things with the pyramid too. That was that was just an example. But like I would give our my rogue the like one of the pyramids, and you can you can separate people from your party too, and they can run off on their own, and you can control them. So I'd have like my party stay around. My rogue could like stealth around and go undetected and get somewhere where we maybe you weren't supposed to be, and then we could just teleport to them, which was like a cool way to deal with some of the puzzles and oh, stuff. That's like awesome. there's multiple solutions. So it was super fun. I had a really good time. I'm I'm excited to go back and play two and then it made me really excited for Baldur's Gate 3 actually like I'm I'm really excited for when that releases later this year uh, I've also been playing Advance Wars 1 plus 2 Reboot Camp <gasps> mm. I love me some Advance Wars and I've only been playing one so far because y'all one's a lot less good than two uh, just just in general just nowhere not even close like one's one's okay so I've been playing a lot of one because if I start playing two, I will not be able to go back and play one. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like two's just like it has better powers, the campaign's better, doesn't force you to play crappy characters as much as, <laughs> as one does. Uh, so I've been playing a lot of one. Advance Wars is cool. I'm excited that it's back. I don't love the new art style. In fact, I yeah. I very much dislike the new art style. I know like Jason and, and Pridge and Zach from Save Data don't super agree with me on that, but I think it looks like a shitty mobile game. They're wrong. Uh, <laughs> they're here, so it looks like wrong. Clash of Clans. It's yeah, so I was like, bad. I think specifically the infantry look horrible, but in general, I'm like, this looks like I, a, a shitty and, mobile game. I don't think, I don't necessarily think that <sighs> art style looks oh, bad, but the art style reminds me of shitty mobile games, and therefore I think it looks bad. Oh, no, I you think know, it looks, like, I think it like, looks, it's been well, co-opted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If if that was if advance if advance wars you know reboot I'm sorry. camp, I'm, can I cut in real quick? I take that back. David's right. This does look bad. I'm looking at a trailer now. Yeah. This does look bad. I, it's very much like it's kind of the the. I think of it similar to the pixel remaster for Final Fantasy that came out recently, where like, yeah. at, at least that one you can use the original sprites, but like 
the remaster ones look worse than the original. This and is it's the like... same for Advance Wars. I'm like, I like the original pixel art better than what you're giving me by this a lot. Like, like third string Nicktoons 10 a.m. toddler cartoon. Like, yeah. Yep. Well, so I'm not yeah, I'm not a fan right. of the art style, but like it's Advance Wars gameplay. So like it's still it's good. It's just I don't I don't love the art style. Oh, yeah, it does yeah. look kind of bad. Yeah, it looks kind of that I've brought so. up an image of it. OK, never mind. It's just it's just the animation in a way that they're, it's it's yeah. just kind of like a fakeness on it. Yeah. So I don't love the art style, but I desperately want new Advance Wars. So I'm like, I need to support yeah. intelligent systems so they get to make another Advance Wars. More Advanced uh, Wars. Yeah more advanced wars so advanced wars having a good time with that when i get to two i will feel much better about it because i know that two is significantly better than one um but man that that game's cursed too i should play two i played like six hours of one and then i dropped it and played sacred stones because it's a much better game yeah Um, no two two is really good and i like dual strike a lot but yeah. I think I, I like the thought of playing a Fire Emblem game where I don't have to care if I lose someone because it's not as soul crushing, yeah. Uh, yeah. which which Fire Emblem isn't as soul crushing as XCOM losing someone. So it's degrees of soul crushing. <laughs> so if I could just yeah. Yeah. play Advance Wars and let everyone die, I will. I'll you be just okay play as Sammy and you just throw your infantry at people. That's all you <laughs> She's a horrible character. <laughs> uh, and then the last burn. game I've been playing, which is which is the one we deleted from the beginning of the show. Uh, <gasps> played a couple hours of Redfall with the save data folks earlier this week. And Oof. folks, game response four out of ten <laughs> was generous. Oh. Wow. It's Redfall is one of the worst games I have played in a long time. <laughs> Damn. Uh, there, I could not come up with something redeeming to say about the game when we were playing it. Uh, <laughs> the shooting did not feel good. Gunplay did not feel good. Aiming down sights felt bad. There was a really, like, really big uh, sensitivity difference between... Uh, I forget what the normal stance is, not ADS and ADS. Uh, oh. Like hip fire and ADS. There we go. And you couldn't configure it. So that's cool. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. It wouldn't have been the end of the world if I could like increase the the aim down sight sensitivity a little bit because it was it was just super duper low. When I was like zoomed in with a sniper rifle, it was at the right amount of sensitivity that I wanted, but with like an AR or a pistol or something like it was insanely low. And I'm just like, I, this is not what I want and I can't change it. Uh, so That's gunplay wild. was not good. Graphically, not impressed by it at all. Um, I was running it on like medium on PC and still didn't perform super great. So performance wasn't good. Uh, and I have like a i9 2080. So I'm not that far behind or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Should be able to run that game at media more better. Uh, but yeah, so like that wasn't going well. Even adjusting the settings was like a nightmare. It doesn't tell you that you have to completely go back out for the settings to apply. Uh, there's there's no thing like oh. there's no thing that's like, oh, your settings have not been applied yet or you need to exit to Jesus. apply your settings or anything like that. So that was fun to find out. The writing didn't seem great. It wasn't like horror bad. It just wasn't good. Uh there were significant like performance issues. There were like people were skating around. We had missions where we finished the mission. We got the new replacement mission and the map marker never moved from the old one. So we oh. didn't know where the new mission was. <laughs> oh, we, like we had, there were a bunch of points where they'd have like a, you know, like an invisible trigger for a voice line somewhere. And mm-hmm we'd all be like, you know, running in our line. Elise was in the front and then uh, it was, it was like Elise, Pridge, and then myself and Elise would hit the trigger first and her character would say a line and then Pridge would hit the trigger and then his character would say the exact same line oh, and then no. I would hit the trigger and then my character would say the exact same line again. Oh. Uh, so that was good. The Jeez. AI in the game just is laughable, to be honest. 
Like the AI in this game is worse than any indie game I've played in a long time. I think. Uh, wow. We could just like walk up to half of the enemies and just punch them, but <laughs> their detection was bad. Wasn't we'd like shoot strafing? somebody with a shotgun like three feet away from another dude, and they'd be like, "I didn't hear that." <laughs> oh, <laughs> Super stealth. Uh, and the vampire AI was horrible. Like they'd lunge at you, and you could just literally strafe left or right, and you wouldn't get hit <laughs> like ninety percent of the time. Like there was, there was empty? no like the open yes. world. Well environmentally no yeah like there's stuff there and like i guess that's probably the one redeeming things i could give like the world was pretty cool the coolest thing in the game was in the first three seconds which was they around the ocean portion of the island like the ocean has waves that are up and they're like frozen in place so like mm-hmm. rippling and moving Ooh. but like frozen which was super cool and i opened it and i was like this is red and that was the high point like that was, <laughs> I was <laughs> downhill. I feel like Redfall had some of the best graphic designers working on it because the like sort of like Stranger Things ish vibes of the logo and all that like 80s ish mm-hmm, sort of synthy mm-hmm. stuff was neat and it was cool. And I was kind of looking forward to that and then having none of the substance behind that. Yeah. And like I just... think the designs for like the main four characters, like they design wise, they look cool, but they look shit in the game. So like, it's hard to and like a town taken over by vampires who have artificially blocked the moon sounds like or also the cool. sun. it sounds yeah. cool um those missions that they showed off looked cool so it's like surprising to see but they're even the missions like weren't exciting it was all just like go find a thing it, it, it'd be like go to this place kill these people find a thing put it somewhere that's every What's... mission What's also interesting is both um, Brad from Next Lander and I don't know, someone just told me it was someone at Giant Bomb for the quick look, both said the preview event they went to was awesome. Like they had, the game was great there. I've heard, I've heard the preview event was like good and then makes a lot of sense. Um, Yeah, I I, I wonder if it was just like a super polished vertical slice. Yeah, and then they just didn't carry that to the rest of the game. Oh, and I I didn't get to the rest of the vampire AI. Like we were doing these vampire nests, which are basically like instance dungeons. Um, and the the name of the thing is a vampire nest. There's a bunch of vampires in it. Uh (laughs) They couldn't like move around in a lot of the places. Like the doorways would be. They like we couldn't get through doorways or even like <laughs> not even like clips, yeah. not even doorways, but like couldn't go into a tunnel that was clearly big enough for them to go into the tunnel. And they just stand there and we just shoot them. And I'm just like, there's like I even said this during our stream. I was significantly more likely to die from my friends shooting a car and it exploding next to me than getting <laughs> killed by an enemy. And that happened like three times and I didn't, I died to an enemy like one time. And that's because the, in one of the vampire nests, it just spawned like 10 vampires on top of oh us. God, and geez. we don't, we don't even know if it was intentional. Like it could have been a bug and they weren't all supposed to show up there because when we, re- when we respawned and came back, there were like two in that spot and the rest were like spread out in the area. So I'm like, I'm not even convinced it was intentional that they added danger. <laughs> like it was an accident. It was a bug. I'm like genuinely curious to try it. I don't know why. Um, I just want to see it firsthand. But also watching Next Lander play it today, at the end of the stream, Brad's like, "Oh, I need like a hundred XP to level up. Let me find an enemy quick." And he spent five Can't minutes find one. Can't walking find one. around to. He found three enemies. <laughs> it's just like, what is going? Like, Wild. I understand the game spawning them at specific instances, but also, like. It's like so empty. Some enemies on the map. It's so empty. I do not understand. And I didn't have high expectations, and I'm still disappointed. I, yeah, I'm most mad that I have a data cap and spent a hundred gigs of it to download this turkey <laughs> of a game. Like, yeah, Jeez. <laughs> I, I wish it was like I was looking forward to this game. There was a lot of stuff going around today of like people hating at the devs and being like, yeah, I'm glad it failed and all this sort of stuff, which is no. like not the right. Like 
not the right message to take from this like people didn't set out to make a bad video game they never do so hate towards the developers doesn't make sense but um gary Witta on the x cast uh made a gr really great point which is when a when a new ip sort of risky game like this fails everyone loses everyone fails yeah because it makes the and he brought up specifically he it makes the phil spencers and the jim ryans of the world not want to take risks on new ips yeah. so when like yeah. when like halo infinite fails eh it's halo infinite they're gonna make another halo game it, it's gonna happen but when this fails it's like oh are they gonna make them go back to dishonored are they gonna make them go back to prey 2 like it, well, it the, the thing that sucks too is like the world of redfall is literally the most interesting part of the game like mm. so like the ip itself is the most interesting part to the point where like yeah i hope they do something with it i just want them to do something good instead of whatever the fuck this thing is like they made a really good D, &D source book and then forgot to play D, &D with it <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't even go that far but like they <laughs> they made, they made a, good, a really good D, &D source book. they made like a good lore bible and then didn't make a game they just yeah they just set up the cameras and hope this thing out yeah out. like <laughs> yeah i don't i don't know or pretend to know what happened with this but i'm utterly shocked that xbox publishing let this game come out yeah and from i know the, that from the x cast like i listened to phil spencer talk about it some and that they had thought from like mock reviews and things that it would perform like double digits better review wise and stuff than it did yeah he said 60s and, they were aiming for well no because it, it's it got 60s oh i thought he said they were aiming for 60s and they got like four like the four out of ten and stuff like that no, no, because no, it's it's low sixties on like meta and open critic. Oh, okay, that makes more so, sense then. Yeah, I, th I think they expected it to be in the seventies and just be like, okay, yeah. this is a game that's good, just not, you know, it's not for a lot of Fantastic. people. It's, yeah. it's 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 a more of a niche thing, and they're like, we're okay with that. They just made yeah. Hi-Fi Rush, which is great and very for very much yeah. a niche <laughs> amount of people, and like Age of Empires two DLC. So like, they're not opposed to that, but like, I have no idea how. The, the mock reviewers must have played a different completely different game than I, I did. that's what i'm wondering um he, yeah he made nothing that point. nothing played well <laughs> right and it was funny he made that point about hi-fi rush and age of empires 2 console edition that more mm -hmm. people played age of empires 2 than hi-fi rush yeah. he was like but nobody talks about that um but yeah but him... the, just just on that point like i'm gonna throw some gasoline on this fire real quick personal opinions hot takes here I wow. see some fucking games industry people on Twitter being like, I'm enjoying Redfall. This is a solid seven or eight. And I'm like, how the fuck can you say that when people are showing off when everybody else is saying it's shit? Every fucking clip I'm seeing is like obvious shit. And you're still here acting like it's a solid seven game. And it's just like, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not saying there's conspiracy here, but I at severely calls into question the taste of portions of the game's media and so if you put them in a press event and you have a publisher they're saying hey come on down let me show you my game and they're inclined to give positive coverage to every fucking game they play that's where i could see well, those, that's, those pre, that's not pre who you get for a mock review though like the mock reviews are they hire freelancers to play the game oh, do a fake those. yeah yeah like that's what phil had said is like yeah they had mock reviewers who were freelancers that they paid to play the game, the review it, then? <laughs> make a review, and then that review just never sees the real light of day. It just goes to the studio for them although, to make. Although part of it, it is, I mean, part of it could also be those reviews could have been four out of tens, and the studio looked at it and just said, "Oh yeah, I, it, it's actually." Well, and that's what you're saying, you know. But it, that's it, what they okay, said is it. like it was from yeah. those and like internal stuff. Like we expect it to be double digits higher, which to me says they expected it to be mid to high 70 um, yeah yeah and that's just i playing what i played i have no idea where that came from and granted i'm sure the the mock reviewers did yeah. not play the same build of the game absolutely 100 percent positive of that so like yeah. well, well i'm saying i'm saying they could have played the exact same thing but it could have been confirmation bias when 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 the studio reads the mock review and they go 
oh, okay, you know, we want this game to be good. We're going to read into the good parts of this review. And so they could have just been misreading those mock reviews higher than what people were really yeah. saying. I mean, it has a score. The mock review has a score. So it's not we're reading the wrong thing. It's like the mock review has a score of double yeah. digits higher than what they got. So like, I, that's why I mean, I question whether the mock reviews uh, but, were but, based on the preview, which was shorter and like shorter, that, sweeter. That sounds be. like it ran be- yeah. better um, compared to the but actual I just, game. But, I don't believe know. there's a better version of this game out there because if there was, they would have been screaming day one yeah, patch yeah, or yeah. they would have been screaming yeah. a patch is coming. A patch is coming. Please. That's, for God's that's sake, why I'm thinking it might be like a preview build that they yeah. used for the mock review because it wouldn't have been a complete build. Yeah. It the, would have um, been potentially higher, you know, like what we talked about earlier, a more concise slice Vertical of the game slice. that is highly produced and it doesn't have a bunch of the extra stuff in it. So it might be able to perform better, you know, the uh, the other interesting tidbit was kind of like they since they had ac- recently acquired them, they didn't really butt in on it too much, which yeah. uh, Phil Spencer admitted like he wished they give them gave them a little more of their help uh, because it's different. Uh, they're now a first party studio. So putting that out as a first party party studio, they didn't realize they were looking at that externally. It's like Xbox put that out where in their case, Xbox really never put their hands on as much. And that kind of makes sense to me because as someone who's in a company that was recently acquired, there were like four or five months before they changed anything about us and integrated. Which is usually good because that means the companies are looking at what's happening before they make dumb sweeping changes. But yeah, I kind of like I still think that's kind of bullshit because like arcane makes good games they just right. released death loop like a year or two ago they had like which was good uh they had they've done prey they've done dishonored this is all, we, those like, are all arcane games so like this is I don't, the first game completely yeah, yeah, I was about from to say, that team right we we yeah, talked about yeah, this yeah, on discord this is, it's the first one completely from austin from that but team. like so that still, team sucks yeah my <laughs> expectations weren't like i expect like a first party xbox game it was even setting my expectations to i expect a bethesda published game yeah still much higher than what this game came out at like but just remember bethesda has bethesda has stinkers and they do but commander keen the mobile reboot the fucking elder scrolls card game that that came out and died you know, oh, like there's shit, <laughs> there's shit that there is shit that Bethesda and ZeniMax have put out recently that have been not good and just dead and buried. The difference was they didn't have the level of press that Redfall yeah, had. They didn't have the level of press. Yeah. They didn't have the level of investment. I don't think either. But like this is a the way they do you, they positioned it. It was a triple A game, and I'm like, yeah. this is not as good as an indie game making the exact same stuff. That was Would that was one of the rumors sh- I. That was one of the rumors I heard, though, was that they they had been slow. They had been slow rolling and, and, and mothballing Redfall for months now in terms of taking resources away, not dedicating resources to it. Like they oh. they they had an idea. Again, this is rumor that they were pitching it as a triple A game, but internally they were like, let's just fucking finish this and get it out because we're not expecting much from it, um, which kind of lines up with what we got, honestly. But it's it, still it, just a rumor. It kind of feels like they got acquired. Microsoft's like, what do you got? And they're like, well, we have this Redfall thing we're working on. And they were like, hey, let's put a bunch of our marketing budget behind that and really push this yep. as a triple A Xbox game. And and everyone was just like, oh, oh, no, oh, oh no, it's not. No. A tr- it's we were not. just going to put out a stinker and move on. Like, no, yeah, like. And obviously, I, I think that's the valid. There weren't people working that. on Redfall going, "Oh yes, the bad." I don't even believe out. that because I, I just googled when when the actual acquisition happened. Acquisition happened in March of 2021, a little more than two years ago. Redfall yeah. has definitely been on the burner for longer than two years. No, no, I, I agree <laughs> no, with that. But was, I think it was already I think it was around. on the burner. Yeah, and then Microsoft was like. Yeah. What arcane game can we start putting What's a, new a tent budget pole? behind? We can't we do Deathloop because it's coming yeah. out on the PS5. Let's pick Redfall. Well, and that then... was basically not basically done, but almost done at that point. Right. Really. So it's yeah. like Microsoft needs to spend their marketing budget on a new thing of games, and they just chose poorly. They're like, hey, let's back this racehorse because it's it's gonna yeah. be our next AAA game, and they just chose a game that 
was never going to be was there. Not. But just none yeah. of us knew that because the marketing budget was so great and in your face that you're like, this is the next arcane game. Yeah. And I think it's, I mean, think of any other five, four, five out of 10 game that's ever come out. Like it's almost like Brink Two had such a 10. crazy marketing budget. <laughs> And that yeah. was a stinker. So it's like, yeah. I think of those games and that makes a lot more sense to me now that that is what yeah. has happened. Um, I, I really, I really buy that just like a complete disconnect and breakdown and expectations between dev product and marketing business side. The thing that gets me is that preview event, like that so many press people went to that and were like, I mean, a oh, this, slice. this thing's good. Yeah. But to to have a slice like that and then release the full game and be surprised like like internally at Xbox, if, if you have a slice like that, did no one in publishing play the fucking game? Like, no, probably, probably not. not. They probably no. should be playing the game. They're going to release. Like, yeah, they probably they not, should. But they're not. Going did to. they only play like the previous slice and like everyone at like arcane austin is just super afraid but to show it, what they does, had like does the like I'll, I'll use my work as an example the people who post things onto our twitter and the marketing managers don't necessarily read the articles yeah. they're putting out no and, um, I, I and don't i'm not expect obviously that. you're not saying that either but yeah. i think that is kind of where you get farther and farther away from arcane austin and that is what is happening is that's, that's the is point i'm trying to make yeah. what yeah yeah so yeah. I agree with that. And I wonder, did you play the mission that was in the preview build or in the Xbox that demo? I don't think because I wonder if you get to that mission so. and it's great. I wonder if that mission is like well put together. We didn't get far because we were not having a good time. <laughs> and I don't think anyone's going to get to that mission, but I wouldn't be surprised if you get to whatever mission was on that Xbox video and probably what they played at the preview event, if it runs better than the rest of the game. Um, it's tighter writing, tighter yeah. design. But cetera. also think but, about it yeah. when they split off these demos, they're QAing the demo build. None of those Correct. bugs yeah. usually QA back to it. So uh, um, that is also a great explanation for it. But it's sad. I, I'm, a, I'm genuinely sad that this has happened in this game because I was looking forward to it. Yeah. Uh, and I think Xbox accidentally built expectations for a four out of ten. Uh, and I'm, they did that. Based on what I played, I'm legitimately surprised this game passed certification, like internal certification to be wow. released. Like that is how much of a broken game it was for me. Well, it passed Bethesda certification, which personal experience does this any max QA is absolute dog shit. Well, no, it needs to pass Xbox certification to go out. No, no, to, yeah, to I know release that. on a console. <laughs> they played the preview Xbox build. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant internal as in studio. No, no, no. Not, I meant I meant console. Xbox. Like, console. also, like, I'm upsetting. surprised it passed console ver- like, certification. Yeah. It's upsetting well, they Cyberpunk knew the did, 30 so. the 30 FPS thing when they gave IGN the 60 FPS. That, that hurt. Also, that hurt me. That was bad. Wow. That was a bad that move hurt me. on a lot of levels. Uh, yeah. No, Phil mentioned when, that, and I was like, Phil oh, said that, I said, y'all no. did that. Y'all did that. Like, also, Phil didn't. Phil didn't that, make that decision, and like, just is taking a heat for if, it. But like, if people haven't listened to that oh. Xbox, I don't watch kind of funny stuff, uh, because I find it kind of dull. Um, but uh, <laughs> sorry, that's a great. Beat me to it. <laughs> um, that X cast, <laughs> Phil was obviously the best part of it, and I like Gary Witta. Um, they, Phil, kept being like, "I am in such a bad place right now." don't i'm grumpy phil right now and he kept acknowledging that but he was he was like he's like i'm sh- i shouldn't be paid he even said something along the lines of i shouldn't be paid as much as i am for the work i do which yeah. is just like bro <laughs> it's okay you you have your but and he kept being like the person who takes over from me when i have enough knocks against me i was like phil no that's great but he, he was like i mean he was phil spent he was back on it he was just like I mean, I trust that man when he says stuff. He's he's candid enough. Like, I've seen enough interviews with him with... Obviously, he has the PR knowledge to avoid some things and talk about things. But the way he is candid about stuff is refreshing from a, from a person so high up in an organization. Yeah, it is. Especially, like, years ago on the Giant Bomb couch with Gersman. Like, he's just a casual person who likes playing video games and also is a, a, the head of the Xbox thing. So I would highly recommend go checking out that interview. 
uh what phil has to say is really interesting especially if you like a peek behind the curtain that you do, do not normally get into these companies until years later um it is it was very interesting to yeah. watch and hopefully starfield has a has a bit more qa behind <laughs> it I, I'm both <laughs> more worried and less worried about Starfield because, like, Phil even says in the interview that, like, they focused on Starfield and didn't really give Redfall the love it deserved. So I'm like, yeah. hopefully that means Starfield it doesn't come in, like, super hot like this yeah. game did. And to be to be fair to, to Phil and Xbox, like, the rest of their releases so far this year have been really good. Like, yeah. Hi-Fi Rush coming out of nowhere was great. Like, Minecraft Legends, while not a thing for me, is doing really well. Like, to, not critically, but also that isn't a game that's going to do critically well. Like, yeah. it's it's brutal legend. It's not going to do critically well. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they did like Age of Empires two DLC for a game that's like ridiculously old and ported and stuff. So like, they're they're doing well this year, other than Redfall that just happened. So it's just a yeah definite kick in the teeth and i also appreciated i think it was paris during that interview brought up like the 12 month thing from the last showcase oh yeah like yeah you showed up all showed the games that were like coming within the 12 months and that hasn't necessarily been true and phil was just like no drop the necessarily like we have not hit the target and like i I really appreciate Mm -hmm. the the candidness of just being like no 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 don't don't sugarcoat us not living up to what we said like we did we said the thing and we didn't deliver yeah i i just want to say i for one am happy that this game came in as a four out of ten because i did not need another fucking game to play (laughs) there's already four remake there's case of the golden idol dlc hit today there's Zelda next week Damn. It kind of fucking retroid pocket. There's too much shit happening right now. OK, I don't I, I literally this is this is this is sadistic, but I was literally happy when I was like, these scores are so bad. I now don't even need to touch it for like journalistic coverage reasons, etc. It's just out of we the just didn't believe it was that bad. And then I played it and it was worse. And I'm like, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> like on I, my I, personal rating scale, it's going to be a two or a three. Like it oh, was it was wow. that bad. <laughs> like, That's why I did not enjoy and Ian last week was defending it, being like, not defending it. You didn't know anything, but you well, were like, how it was, can it be? It, a it was, <laughs> we were in the middle of a stream and Will dropped the review score, but we hadn't seen any of the actual stuff yet because we had just gotten through. Well, Argo, David and I wrote was it. like, yeah, David, I, yeah, Dave wrote it. All I knew was at work that morning meeting the I hadn't seen the review because the graphic hadn't come in for it so i never knew yeah but i just knew that guides had dropped it completely they weren't doing any guides for it and i was like that's interesting and then yeah on the thing i knew the embargo was 801 and then david wrote it or 801 or whatever it was and then david wrote it and i was like i was we don't mean me right i wasn't i thought it was you <laughs> it, w- it was during the shadows of doubt stream wasn't it oh it was shadows of doubt stream that's what it was oh yeah on monday yeah and and, and so that's I, I i wasn't necessarily that's defending nice. the game it's just the score came in hot in the middle of the stream and i was like there's no yeah. way redfall is that bad like and that's, something's that's going what on we here. thought too that's like, why we played it we're like there's yeah. no way this this game from arcane even if it's yeah. arcane awesome like there's no way it's that bad and then i was like oh oh, oh should have yeah should have listened to the review scores on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so anyways shout out uh case of the golden idol zelda next week there's a re4 remake just Alundra play two. any fucking else right now it doesn't Kingdom system shock, next week doesn't system shock 2 come out this month no yeah. one one it's a remake of system one. shock one remake yeah. one comes out this there's month. just so much shit coming final out, fantasy so 16 don't say system shock because i'll play yeah. system shock 2 again <laughs> don't say the words <laughs> it'll just happen i'm playing it he'll I do just it installed it. he'll do it <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> um god system shock 2 game of game of the generation um that's gonna be the show i think um i think there was someone put a spotlight on here i don't know oh, who put me. it on there was it you you want to spotlight yeah, Terra Nail? yeah so I, there's been a lot of like really good games and big games so far this year so i was like hey there's this neat kind of city builder sort of thing except it's kind of an inverse city builder where you start with a wasteland and in yeah. Terra Nil, you're supposed to be you're, like, your goal is to regenerate the wasteland into like a green lush environment. Uh, and it looks super cool. It's something I've been meaning to play, but just 
I haven't had time with everything else that's going on to to hit. Uh, from Devolver, looks super good. Has pretty positive reviews on on Steam. Uh, so I'm super. It's on my wish list. So I was like, I'll I'll toss this on here because it looks like a fun time. It looks cool. Yeah, it looks really cool. That's Terra Nil T E R R A space N I L. Yes. If you're listening to this, it should be in the podcast notes. And if you're watching this and listening to this, uh, it should be in the YouTube notes. If you're just watching this and reading our lips, you're a freak and you shouldn't. I forgot. Go away. I forgot sign language. I knew it for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, um, it took like three uh, semesters of it in college. This is gay <laughs> shoes, I think. <laughs> George, George, George taught me that. So if it's wrong, I apologize. But both the parents are deaf, so it's close. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually geishas is what you're, is what you're signing. <laughs> My favorite thing ever is uh, we were shooting a film and his dad was there. It was nine in the morning. We were cleaning out the place because we were leaving, and he just looks at me holding a beer and he goes, "Beer." Like wanting me to drink, finish this beer at nine in the morning, and I. It's just that I have, I have to ask you. I have to ask you a personal question, but I need to know: Is George going to be at your wedding? Oh hell yeah, George is going to be. At yes, my wedding. I get to see George in a month. Yes, <laughs> Georgie. Oh, I love it. I'm he's so like, excited. I was like, did you get the the thing? He's like, dude, I put it in my calendar. Can't wait to RSVP. I was like, okay, George, calm down. He's just... trying to get me to do an event a week before my wedding. He's like, we'll put you in a bubble. You won't get sick. I was like, okay, George. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just, I just uh, shout out to Georgie. This is related to us. He's in the, he makes a cameo in the pixelate Montreal video. Um, oh, and it's yeah. fantastic. Cause that's the first time he's been out of the country. It just happened to be a coincidence that he was there the same weekend that yeah. Karen, Will, Maggie and I were there. And it was so great walking around the city with him because he was just like, this city's so much fucking better than New York. And he's like, the coffee <laughs> tastes amazing. Like it was just like, yeah, George. Yeah. He was leading us the around the, the city fantastic. as if he lived there. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> following him through construction sites. Because he, he was only been there for like a day and a half, but he just kept wandering the streets. So he knew oh. all the streets already. It was crazy. God, what a, he's a wild boy. Absolutely wild so good. boy. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, folks. Um that's gonna be the show this week. I'm gonna hit the outro button and we're gonna we're gonna cook through this. Ah! local chat french champagne uh you can do uh, this sunday 5 p.m eastern scan lines is gonna be happening david's gonna be there it's gonna be super fun we're gonna yeah. be playing legends of the Lagaya. Yeah. Uh, is that how i pronounce it and Legend then something the else uh and then i gotta find some more stuff to install so we're gonna be doing that 5 p.m eastern 5 p.m eastern on sunday uh and then tuesday 8 p.m eastern back to the kingdom hearts ian goes uh, I beat I beat two bosses last time, so you, we're back on a roll here. Three bosses, if you count. Try not to fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that bit works way better when it wasn't typed into a chat. Um, <laughs> well, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, I've been your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week was David. You can check him out at Save Data. Also was Ian. Thank you everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>